Uh, are you ready to? Talk. Oh. <laughs> Not ready. Yeah. All right. Today we are what we're going to do the appraisal. Okay, the appraisal. Um, you know, please hold all questions to the end, and we'll uh, you know, we'll discuss after. We'll go straight through the presentation. And this is uh, actually just going to go kind of over what an appraisal kind of looks like, so you're familiar with it. Uh, when you know, if you have, if you have a listing, they're coming over. They're going to meet with you as the broker. That's the, the name that they have, and you are the one that's responsible for showing appraiser. You know, uh, the inspector will probably be the other broker that'll do it, but you're in control of the key, obviously, because you own the key. So to that property. So, but the appraisal definitely is going to be the person that you're going to meet, and this will kind of give you an idea of what is what the appraisal entails. Okay. Um, how it looks. But the best slides, sir. Um, okay, the first page of an appraisal is basically simply all about kind of what you put on this machine for the most part. That's exactly what it is. All that data that is on your listing sheet, this is why it's imperative to fill out your listing sheet with all of the information because. As you guys know, I'm an appraiser as well as a broker. Okay, when I look at a nice, good, clean listing sheet that's done well, I, I yes, I've gone to the property, I've taken photos and done all that stuff. But as an appraiser, we do lots of them. Okay, and the, the time that we go out and do the property versus the time that we're coming back and writing it up. There's probably been three, four, five, six, seven other properties that we've been into, and now we're sitting down and doing the paperwork. Trust me, I don't remember. Okay, you know, flat out until I'm sitting down and starting to write, then it starts coming to me. I look at the photos. So when I look at a good listing sheet, also starts to get you know get me going and, and, and starts helps me remember exactly. Oh yeah, it was all great. Oh, it's brick and aluminum. You know, these are the kind of questions. That would have an answer. We have to be very specific as a, as a um, as an agent, a broker. You don't need to be as specific on your listings as an appraiser needs to be. It's extremely helpful if you are though. Okay. So in my opinion, you should be. Okay. If you're a good agent, you can tell by your listings. Okay. That you're thorough, stickler for detail. The right thing. I can look at this in two seconds and really tell if I don't want to say success has nothing to do with the giving. Let's just put it that way. Because I've seen very successful agents with very lousy listings. Okay, so um, you know, there, you know, it doesn't so it doesn't equate necessarily. So you know, don't always think you know. But I, when I say a good agent, I'm I'm looking at a person that beautiful listing sheet. Very descriptive, tells everything and anything that I need to know as an appraiser, which what this does so you understand is make it easier for the process to go through. Less questions to the broker. If I forgot something as I just told you as an appraiser, I'm going to make a call to the broker. Why should I have to make a call when everything should be in the listing sheet? I should never have to make a call. And when I look at my comps and look at my subject, which I should have pretty detailed notes on. Okay, I'm sorry, for sure. Well, let's get to the point where let's say this the comparables. Okay, I don't know the comps. I haven't been in them. Maybe I have, but that would be just luck. You know, but the likelihood is I haven't been into the comparables. So what am I putting all my eggs in the basket on? The listing sheet. And I took a photo from the exterior, but the rest of it is interior stuff. You know, I'm trusting you as brokers. To supply me with a listing sheet that's descriptive enough for me to answer the questions that are on the appraisal. Okay? And that's a big responsibility. I mean, really, you're, 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 you're making me either look good or look bad. Okay? 
Because I can only go with the information that's put in front of me by you as brokers. I just want you guys to understand the whole process. And that's the problem in this industry. Everyone's all about me, 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 me. And not about the process and what goes into the closing. Ultimately, what makes you guys close quicker, go smoother, get to the end. And that's all about, you know, one of the largest part of the whole deal is the appraisal. Because if the appraisal doesn't come out, value-wise, your deal isn't closing on time, your deal isn't happening the way you thought it was going to happen, the way you wanted it to happen, there are now issues. So the better your listing sheet is, was, uh, you know, your listing, you put it, the better everybody is throughout the profession. That's phone call. You know, I shouldn't have to call brokers. I call brokers all the time because I'm very much a stickler. I want to know everything and anything, and most brokers don't put it in there the way they should. And sometimes I get even deeper than the questions that, that maybe the broker does do, but they don't. I get, I get even deeper. But if you think, well, that be why not? You know, it's on the listing sheet. There you should be on there. Okay, you're trying to sell. Other than the fact that you know. This property, you know, is a piece of crap. They buy me, you know, because it doesn't show very well. That's clearly not something you want to put out of this uh, listing sheet. But by the same token, you do want to say, you know, well, certainly, you know, needs, you know, needs a little more beyond, you know, don't puff. I, I, I'm not, you know, you can puff and it's legal, but, you know, don't lie. You know, if it really doesn't show well, it doesn't show well. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a, there's a buyer for every property. It's got the price back, that's all. Okay, so on this first page of, of, of this is the, the front page of every appraisal report, and it's called the URAR, and you know, basically starts with um, the, uh, the property address, of course, it asks for legal description, so when you're a listing agent, you, know, you, need, you need a legal description, you gotta have it, okay? So supply that to them, that's on here, that's on this front page, and then we get into the neighborhood, we gotta, we, we gotta put, you know, uh, Vacancy rate in the neighborhood, things like that. Now, this is not something that you would put on in anything that you've got going there. But these are the things that we're looking for so you understand what we're looking at. You know, if there's any vacant properties, any board ups, or anything like that, you have to comment on things like that. Okay? Um, oops. I'm going to take a brief break here. Sorry, guys. That's okay. It was. And uh, so. When, as you're communicating on your listing with the appraiser, you know, you know, you know what you want to do you know, on this, you talk about the neighborhood, you talk about what's not on your listing sheet, of course, but uh, some of the other questions on this page one have to do with are the curbs concrete, are the, you know, are the sidewalks concrete, all these things are questions so you understand as brokers what an appraiser has to do. I, that's what this class is really, this, this little seminar is about. So you understand where we're coming from and what we're looking for as an appraiser. You know, I can speak to both because I am both, and therefore, you know, you, you should know. You should know what though. This is what they're looking for. If you look at an appraiser, look at all this. It's pretty detailed. You know, it's got a lot of stuff on here. So you're talking about the streets, whether it's asphalt, whether it's you know the brick like it will not, you know, whether it's you know all these different things. These are all factors, and they and they are check boxes like we have in our listing agreements and things like that, or list the list the listings themselves. Okay, then you're talking about the sewers, you're talking about uh, you know, the driveway. You know, one of the biggest things on an appraisal, one of the things that can make you look bad as an appraiser, I always, because I used, I teach courses, you know, for your appraisal license and for your uh, growth license. So I that for many. Okay, I always tell people, the appraisal form, this is a form, basically a two-page form with a lot of debt just breeds errors. It's the easiest thing to make mistakes on that there is. It's just it's so simple. But you look really bad when you do it. There's some of the easiest questions like, what's the, what's the, what is the driveway made out of? You can't tell the difference between asphalt and concrete? Well, the problem is, is that most people just copy it from an old one, like we do with listings, okay? So you'll do that in a neighborhood that let's say you just did one in Arlington Heights, and you, you're doing another one two blocks down, so you basically copy the whole report, copy the report, boom, put it in there, and then you alter the other. The biggest problem when doing that is 
make sure you make those changes because how dumb do you look if you can't even tell the difference between asphalt and concrete? But the reality is that has nothing to do with it. You know, but that doesn't matter. That's how it looks. Because, you know, someone looks at your appraiser, whether that's the underwriter at the, at the bank, or more importantly, the buyer. They dismiss the entire appraisal on the fact that you can't even get asphalt versus concrete. But they do. And you can be the greatest appraiser ever. If you make a mistake like that, I mean, think about it. If you look at it, this guy's an idiot. You know, how does he not know that? You know, then what does he know? Or she? Right? I always think of things like that. You need to be so careful. Every That's why I always took every appraisal that I've ever done, like it was my baby, and I said, I think I've never done another thing before. Once you do that with your listing, you know, this is the only one I have. That was true, what is it? Before one of the year. You know, you know, more than that. Um, you know, so, but that's what you have to treat. The same way you should treat your listing, the same way you should treat your body, your purchaser, your purchaser, you know, whatever. Um, and you can try to keep that in mind. Because that becomes an individual and it's important. Okay, so the rest of this front page basically is talking about all the specifics, you know, from the driveway, the exterior of the house, brick and aluminum. Those are things that you should put on your listing, you know, because they give you the check boxes and it will show up as brick and aluminum. Now, on an appraisal, I care about the fact of what's more predominant. A listing doesn't show that, you know, because it doesn't give you that option. You just get to check two boxes that it's brick and it's aluminum. The usual is brick the side, three sides of aluminum. So I always list things that as aluminum and brick. Predominant first. Okay? On the appraisal, everybody has their own methods of what to do. There is no predestined you know, I mean, to me, I just try to make sense out of things. Okay, so I would put predominant first. You know, there's sometimes it's three different you know, it's drive it, grind out, and brick. Okay, so I mean, we'll have three. I've seen four different types of construction. On there. So, but I put them in the order that they exist. I have a rhyme or reason of what I'm doing in that appraisal. Okay. And then there's one thing here for additional features. Okay. Which is the kind of the thing of your remarks. That should be kind of the same thing. And that's where you have a chance as, as brothers to shine and help out the appraiser. Because those are the kind of the similar thing. You know, when I have a listing, I'll put everything. Underground sprinkler system, uh, you know, every little detail, recessed lighting and living room dining room. You know, you know, you've got a lot of space there to write stuff. You know, you're having characters, you've got a lot of characters to do so. Um, so it's imperative that you do that. It, it's again, it's the appraisal process helps your process. Okay, to close quicker. Less question. Hey, did that, you know, uh, otherwise I can call. Hey, did the, uh, you know, did the living room have carpet or this because you didn't want to? You know, because you should be closer for that, you know, whether it's hardwood, carpet, or whatever, and you should have it for some. But sometimes you don't, and maybe my photo didn't come out very well, or I got a little bit too high, and I couldn't see the floor. Okay, because we have to take photos of the room as a present. Okay, so these are the kind of things to be cognizant of because the next person in your process needs that information. And you can, more, you can go another step with that. Every person that looks at your listing, like I, I, you know, I was talking previously, you know, prior to class, that there was a listing that was really bad by one of the agents recently, it lacked all of those things, and how much it impacts how people look at it, you know, when they can look at the listing sheet and say, hey, I'm not, okay, this has got hardwood, you know, some people are real stickler, they want hardwood here, they want that, they can live with carpet in the bedroom, but they gotta have it, you know, the hardwood living around the kitchen area. Everybody's got different criteria in their head. If you're not indicating that on the listing sheet, you're doing a disservice. Your client and the public. The public needs to know. That's what you're trying to get it out to. That's what you're trying to sell it to. To somebody in the public. Um, that's what page one is, okay? Page two of the, of the report. So the main parts of the report here. On the left, I know this is kind of difficult to see, on the left, left hand side there, that's the subject property. Okay, on the left there is, and everything is compared to the subject property. Okay, that's how they do adjustments and whatnot. So on the left, it basically, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll say if there's a sale price, if it's a sale, 
220. We'll have the sale price there. And then it goes down to each and every category, talking about when the sale date was, and then it says you know, design or construction, two story, split level, you know, whatever. Then it talks about the construction type. Then, it's, then it talks about you know, how was the construction, average, good, fair, you know, whatever the case may be, condition, okay? Then it talks about age. Then it talks about room count. When we talk about room count, laundry rooms do not count. Uh, when we talk about room count, we're talking about living room, dining room, kitchen, family room, four bedrooms, two baths, and a half. So that's an eight, four, two and a half, okay? We don't count basements generally in our overall picture of the home, okay? The MLS allows us to do that now. They count it. But when you're comparing apples to apples, you want to count your above grade, if you will, above grade levels to compare and then whatever else is in the basement. It's semantics. Does it count? Sure it counts. It just counts differently, if you will, okay? And that is addressed on the appraisal report as well because the, the next column after square footage and, and room count is basement, full, partial, whatever, and then finished rooms. How many finished rooms do you Now, you don't have a big link to that on the appraisal, so it's more or less just, you know, two, two rooms finished plus one bath, you know, something like that. That's all you get. You get a one-line little thing. There's not much to it on the line items. Okay, doesn't mean you can't describe it better, but it means on these line items that already exist on the left-hand column there. And then it, it gets into, there's also one of the places for view. Now, if you do that, or golf course, if you front a busy road, if you, you know, negative or positive, okay, these are things that need to be addressed. If it's normal, average, simply average. I put SFR slash average, would be single family residence, you face another single family, and the back is another single family slash average. If that's not the case, that's also addressed. Okay, <laughs> once again, these are things that you do on your listing sheet. Not to the negative, of course, because that's not how you sell a property. But on a positive, it should be. I mean, if you back to the golf course, that should certainly be addressed. If you back to the pond, a pond, <coughs> if you have a lake view, these are all things that should be in your remarks, as well as there's other check boxes that say lake view, if it's a lake view, whatever the case may be. Won't have, um, these are all things that are important on your listing. I've seen listing sheets, don't even say that. Selling. Okay, uh, and then you then you get into uh, the end there. Fireplaces, uh, patios, things like that. All these extra features. Okay, so these are things that all need to be addressed. Uh, they should be stated in your listing sheet. Once again, I shouldn't have to be digging if I forgot something as an appraiser, or more importantly, on my comps. I shouldn't have to like. And I do this as an appraiser all the time. I have to make phone calls. Um, you say, does this, this property have a patio? Uh, does this property have a patio or anything like that? I shouldn't have to make that phone call. It should be right in the listing sheet. How could you not check that box? How are you not trying to sell this property properly? Okay, that's the problem with not having a very good listing sheet. And, you know, and it's, oh, that happens all the time. Yeah. Patios, decks, porches. They're not even mentioned. Okay, or checkbox, if you will. It's a lot of it's checkbox. I do both, by the way, on the list. I make sure that it's, I state it as well as check it. Okay? Because I think it's important. Obviously. I mean, I come from a different viewpoint, you know, but it's an important viewpoint because it's, once again, what takes you through the whole process and it makes you a better broker. Okay? And then there's a last column where it's blank on the appraisal. I always write the word other. Okay, on the very bottom on the left there, you know, it's actually in the middle of the page there. And what it is, is upgrades, things like that. You know, updated kitchen, 2016, something like that. You know, up, updated baths, you know, I'll just put up, updated baths and kitchen, boom. And then I have a line of them all the way across. So the next three are the three comps. This is comp one, comp two, comp three, and then the larger, you know, looks uh, vacant there is the adjustment that you're making for whatever difference that you have. That's what the appraisal looks like. So you've got, on the left there, you've got the subject, then you've got three comparables, one, two, three, and you're putting, you know, whether they're the same or not the same, and whatever differences exist in each and every one, one fireplace versus two, zero fireplace versus one, you 
whatever that is, um, brick and cedar versus you know vinyl, you know vinyl only or whatever. Every one of these requires an adjustment if it is different than the subject, and you adjust to the subject. Okay, and you can do this on your. When I give uh, my clients, oftentimes you know here are the comps. I'll do that. I'll you know. There's, you know, obviously I know what to do. I'll put you know negative five grand for this, negative six grand for that, plus five for this. You know, what it means. And what remember you're always comparing it to the subject. So in other words, you negative something that's superior, get it? If, it's, if, it, if we're vinyl, this one's brick, that's a negative fifteen grand. Negative fifteen to the subject because the subject's only vinyl versus the brick over here. Okay, vice versa. They have, you know, one fireplace, you have two. That's a plus. If you add to the additional fireplace that comp one does not have. Okay. And that's how adjustments work. If they're the same, they're the same. No adjustments. But, okay? And, and certain things, even though they may be different, but this needs to be explained in an appraisal so you understand how great work. Marketplace, can, you know, uh, believes them to be the same. Okay? Like, for example, to me, Brick and um, and or you know uh, private isn't so common anymore, but the uh, hardy board, you know, concrete, those are similar. They have the same utility. Now, what seems to be more prevalent and preferred, if you will, is the hardy board of concrete. You know, that's that's what the public seems to want versus brick, but they have the same. You know, can't burn. You know, uh, you know, whatever. It's the same as far as uh, uh, insurance. You know, they both have that rating. And that kind of stuff, and they're very similar. That is what the premium that you would look for in a home, okay? Versus you know, vinyl and aluminum, are basically the same. Aluminum is the older mine, basically is what it is. But they have the same. They're not different in the marketplace. Uh, that one. And once again, and I'm talking about Illinois. I don't know what exists in Idaho. I don't know what exists in. What I'm saying right here might be completely different. Brick is nothing like party board. You know, everyone prefers brick over the top. I know what I know here. Because I'm an appraiser at Rover in Illinois, Chicago area. That's what you that's all you that's what we're talking about. Nothing more. That's what appraiser is. The rest of this page too just talks about whether they, you know it compares the things back and forth. And then it comes up with an adjusted value range. Okay, so it's got the three sale prices up here. It's got, you know, it should have the subject sale price, and then whatever these three cops sold for. And then after all adjustments, the, uh, you know, the, the, it will automatically figure out what the adjusted number is. And in theory, you should be within five to seven percent. That's what a good appraisal, you know, is, is within. Uh, so in other words, if my adjustment comes out to, let's say, this property sold for 200, hopefully I'm coming in, you know, 198 to 2, 207, something like that. You know, I calculated it out, but I know that's a pretty tight percentage. I'm okay with that percent. Okay. If one comes to 198 and this one comes at 260, we got a problem. Okay. Means I have lousy accounts <coughs> or something is wrong, you know, with what I'm doing or what's going on. Place, you know, something's wrong. Okay, I'm missing something. Maybe this one is completely updated. It came to 260. What was going on? You know, it must have been completely updated or something. And I knock it down 50, 60, 60 grand just to get it down. Why did that happen? The likelihood is upgraded from top to bottom, unlike the subject, it wasn't something along those lines. Okay, and that's how you have to look at things and, and, and do it, or you just have to. For all the reasons, you know, for those reasons are. Um, so, um, all right. So that's page two. Page uh, uh, this this third page. In our uh, thing here is really uh, it's still it's still actually uh, we're talking about you know page two here. And what it is is the cost approach. Okay. Now lenders. We don't really go by cost approach so much anymore because it's not really a, a 
viable option. You know, there's in the appraisal world, you know, there's you know, you got you got the sales comparison approach, which is what most often utilized, okay, because that's truly what the market is, especially in residential. Right now we're going to move here to residential market. Okay, you have your income approach, which would be absolutely about commercial and anything. I would argue with you that two to four is not about the two years to four years. It's not about rental income approach. Above that, absolutely, it becomes about rental and income approach. Okay, and then you have your cost approach. Cost approach, which is really um, the most applicable kind of cost approach, is new construction or newer construction, because then cost equals job, you know, cost equals market. Value. That's one of the only times because when the builder says I'm charging you eight grand for a fireplace, what's the value of a fireplace? Eight grand. I mean, because you're doing it, and he's selling it, therefore it equals. That's the market. And you said yes. Okay. If you are, you say, I'm only doing it for six, well, then the market is six. Okay. Um, so you see, but sometimes, as you know, cost does not equal value. If it costs you 30000 to redo your kitchen, and if you had a perfect world, and we know, okay, I put thirty into the kitchen, and then it's sold, and there's the exact same house next door, and that one sold without the updated kitchen, and it was, you know, and you only got twenty grand more than that one. Well, you spent thirty to get twenty. Not bad, sixty-seven percent return on, you know, on what you did, but maybe you should have done a little bit lesser. You know, you could have maybe upgraded your kitchen, but didn't have to do it to that degree. Now there are some, you know, there's always that thing that comes out every year that tells you what's the, you know. What do things cost and what are they worth? You know, in the marketplace. And it comes out in every area of the country and all the different places. You know, and that's from roofs to windows and this and that, all the different components that make up a house. Okay. As you know, every house has to have windows. Every home has to have a door or doors. Okay. Every home, you know, has to have a roof. So and it has to have some sort of sight. What makes you superior? In other words, you know, when you put on those windows, when it's windows, say it costs you, you know, twelve grand to put on new windows all throughout the home. You know, keep in mind there is that twelve grand worth what you just did. That you, you know, maybe it absolutely had to be done. You know, if that's the case, you didn't have that to go. But if it was something that was simply, it will look a lot better if we do this, and we'll have an easier time selling. You know, find out. The best way to find that out is to ask an appraiser. Someone like me or other appraisers out there because we know stuff like that. Okay. As a good broker, you can know stuff like that too by studying marketplace. You can study it, you can figure it out. It, it really um, it lays itself out there. It really does if you really know how to study markets and look at it, look at what happened with this house versus this house. Especially it's a lot easier in suburbs or places where they have the same houses. Because you can really compare A, B, C, D, and E. They're all kind of the same except for this one had an updated kitchen. This one had an extra fireplace. This one had this. Condos are kind of the easy when they're all the same. I love good condo <laughs> building from an appraisal standpoint. Nothing better than a condo building. And they have all the same units. There's like 75 of them that are pretty much all the same. The only differences are, you know, hey, this one had an updated kitchen. This one didn't. This one, you know, had an updated bath. This one didn't. Then you kind of know numbers and it makes life easy for a person. Okay. And for evaluation is broke. Okay, so you know that, that should in theory work. Well, this last portion of this page gets into cost approach. The lenders generally want cost approach in there, relevant or not, they want it in there. Okay. And basically, just so you understand, land value, I mean anything over 30%. Okay, so thirty percent, you know, so if it's worth a million dollars, you know, three hundred, you know, three hundred grand, thirty three, three hundred thirty grand, you know, somewhere in that, that's what they're that's kind of normal. Um, when you get to areas outside of good areas, you know, it's not unusual to be twenty percent, fifteen percent. It's not such a great area. It's more about a house than it is the land. Okay, you get into your North Shore, you get into a lot of these portions of the city. Well into the 40, 50 percent. Okay. By the way, lenders don't bend on that. So, from an appraisal, if you ever look at the appraisal, you know, think about this. A lender is not giving you a million dollars. Right? They're giving you a home that I can 
So if we come over 35% on that number, so if you see what you perceive to be a wrong number in a cost approach on land value, it's because we know what we do. Okay. We want you to get the loan. Okay? Because if we put it the way it might really be, you're not getting the loan. Okay? It's that bad. In other words, it's 70% land, you know, 70% land. The land is worth 700, and the houses are worth a million. And they know, you're not going to 700 grand. <coughs> right? I mean, that's, that exists around here. Okay? But is the house really over 300 grand? I mean, it's, it, it's, it's not simple. But the point being, there's appreciated value and all that kind of stuff. That's why the cost of this isn't such a great approach, unless it's new. Then you can really equate land value, cost of build, whatever, 150, 200 bucks a foot. You know, no, and you can get all those numbers. And just so you understand, I'm afraid, I'm just going to give you one more thing that's just, and until my brother, who I trained many years ago, I trained many people, I'm crazy, but he didn't get it until one day. You know, it took it, and then when I, I see the light go on, you know, the bulb goes on, and when they get this, and this will help you as brokers too, every one of those components back at page two there, when you break down that appraisal, okay, in theory, if you, you know, just think about this in concept. You add every one of those up, that should equal the value of the house, right? The total number, right? 200,000. So if you break every adjustment down, like you had an adjustment in every one, and you actually add them all up, at some point it should equal the number, right? So that's every component of the house. This is why you have to think like that. Some people say, well, it costs 200 bucks a foot to build, right? Or 150, whatever, you, whatever your number is. Can you make an adjustment of 150 or 200 under? Square footage. I just told you it costs 150 or 200 dollars to build it. So in theory, I should make 150 or 200 dollar adjustment on the square footage, right? If one's 200, you know, 1500 square feet, and the other one's 17, 200, and no, no, no. Remember, I told you every component, every one of those line items equals the house. So you can't put it all in one. So that's why the numbers. People don't understand the concept. It's more like 25 to 50 bucks a foot of simply on square footage. The rest of that is air conditioning, the fireplace, you know, all the different components that come into that house, the construction, exterior construction type, all those things. All of those add up to $200, right? Get it? That's what, you know, when that bolt goes off down the crater, when I see the crater actually understand all that and understand what this does, that's when they finally get it. That's how you componentize each and every adjustment and make adjustments work for you at what works in the market. And that's how you, you know, this is more appraisal thinking, but you should know this as brokers who understand the concept of what things are really worth and why. You know, you know that's, that's what this stuff's all about. All right, let's see if good. Go here, move ahead. The next thing is the addendum, okay? Um, and the addendum basically explains anything and everything that you wanted to put to words, okay? Um, things need explanation, okay? The biggest complaint in appraising is that the appraisers like making assumptions that you guys understand everything, whether you as the homeowner looking at the appraisal, the underwriters, and all these other things. The biggest move in appraising that's been altered is that they want way more explanation. You know, you know, back in the day, I've been doing this for a long time. The assumptions were always that the people reading this, which by the way we have to say in the beginning, who is this intended for? Who are the intended users? Okay, because it's not for the layperson. It really isn't. You know, they really get this and understand any of this stuff. It doesn't make any sense to them other than. You know, okay, there's a house, there's a house, there's a little sold for, you know, anybody can understand that part. But why these adjustments are, enough. but that's what this explanation is for. Made adjustments for square footage, and what I just told you about square footage. I did it because of this. There's way more of that explanation now that needs to be provided in a regular report, and the why. Fireplace seems to have, you know, $3,500. Why did I make a $3,500 adjustment? I have to explain it. 
they, they want that to be part of your uh, discussion and the why, not just that you did it because supposedly they're an expert. Okay? You're supposed to get into the actual piece. Okay. This next part of the uh, uh, report, you know, talks about market conditions. Okay. This is something you can derive straight into, you know, you go right into the MLS and you can get you know, how long these properties have been on the market in your particular price range and all this kind of stuff. And they ask these questions. Once again, as a broker, you don't really have to deal with it. You can know this stuff. But as appraisers, we have to answer to this and, and, and address it in an addendum that's just part of the report. Okay? You know, it's an automatic part of the report. Then the other part of an appraisal report on a sale is additional listings. So every appraisal report requires a minimum of three comparables. Many appraisers are putting four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is extra pages, of course, you know, there's only three to them at first, but you're going to have additional four, five, and six. So that's why it's not a problem to supply the appraiser with five, six, whatever it is, whatever is relevant. They're not relevant, don't put them in there, but they're relevant. And we need a minimum of two listings. Okay, just so you know what an appraiser needs, that's what this next page is. These are the two listings. Same type of adjustments, but remember, it's a listing, so therefore it's only an asking price. So in theory, what should it be? A little higher, of course, where you pull. <laughs> if you've got ones, so if, 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 if the reason they ask for these listings now that it used to be in the is because they want to see what the trend is. You know, we have market tracks a few years ago. Okay, so they want to know what the trend is. If they see listings being lower than what you're selling for, I don't think they're too happy about doing this loan. Remember, they're giving a 30-year loan, 15-year loan, whatever they're doing, and they're projecting out, and you know, they're going to make the assumption that banks actually know something and actually care. But the reality you know, is they probably don't. But the bottom line is, the loan, you know, being projected out like that, should be ex you know, explained by the listing, and the listing should be higher. That's the theory. Okay. That's how the loan comes out, and allowing the loan to go. Okay. Next part, the appraisal is all your actual explanation. Subject property. Okay. Front, rear, and street, all the automatic. You gotta have a front, rear, and a street seat. Okay? So I always take one slightly angled from the front, I take um, uh, a slightly angled from the rear, and then I take both street seats just for the heck of it. Okay, even though you're only required to put one in there. Okay? That's that's a must. Not every uh, appraisal report. That's what you see on that page. The next is about the comps. But I'm sorry. The subject also you need every room. They want every room. They want everything that they're in. So that you will have. I didn't include that in there because it's too much, too much in here. But you need every room. So we will. You know, we, every appraiser has his phone. We'll take a picture of every single room, okay, in there and supply that in the report, including basement, laundry room, the whole nine yards. Okay. This next page though are the comps. We need a front photo, real photo, you can't go take it out of the MLS or anything like that, of every single comparable, just the front photo, so that you literally, I mean, I literally open up my window and, you know, not the thrill <coughs> when people are standing outside right in front of the door, um, you know, whatever, but it happens, you know, but most people these days, if you're ever going to be a trader, they do understand, especially if they have, they've brought their house in the last 12 months, that appraisers can buy it. Okay, so even if they are there, I try to wait for they look the other way, so I don't have to explain anything. <laughs> but, you know, and I got, I'm pretty good at that. As soon as they turn their head, they go, you know, I'm gone. And, uh, but you take, you take your comp pictures, and you need the listing. The listing wants anything, any comparable. So, when I'm in the field, for example, I'll take five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten comps, because I don't always know which comparables use in my report. So I would know that when you're an appraiser, the only thing you have on your side is time. And you waste it. But when you're there, take all eight, nine, ten photos because if you have to circle around and come back two days later, you waste it completely accepted. Those are flat feet, you can set feet. You know, they don't get extra money because I screwed up and I can come back and do my feet. They don't really care. You know. So the point being, you know, you just you know in appraisal world that's that's what's important to do. Here's the photos of the, the two listings, just like you know, they're cops, you know, so you have to take those as well. 
just so you understand what the equation is doing, then we always need a floor plan. That's why I encourage you guys to put floor plans in your listing. First of all, it helps you sell a listing, okay? Second of all, pray for the process, okay? You've just done one of the trader's jobs for him or her, right? Because this, we have to draw this. This is part of it. This has to be um, uh, you know, a two-story, um, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a raised ramp, so you got the first level, and then you got the lower level. And we don't need walls, we need doors where they are, like that's where my axes are, and then you just need to where the rooms are. Okay, in the old days we had to draw, you know, that's why I'm actually pretty good at that stuff. I can draw like an architect because that's what he needs to do. It was mandatory. Okay, you know, I perfect, I have all the rooms, I still got my own, and every perfect wall, every door, and you know, how you do it. No different than an architect. They got away from that many years ago and simply wanted to know where the rooms were, you know, and that was sufficient. Sure, made it a whole lot easier. And a lot of this stuff is done electronically too. You can draw it, right? I'm saying, I know. Um, but it's still, it's still like a simple waste of time. And then the last thing that we do as an appraiser, that must do, is indicate where the subject property is and all the perils, okay? Via, you know, perils or whatever, you know. And uh, you know, you do the old school, and I guess you can do it online, and it's just, you know, quick setting where everything is, okay? So these are all the components. That make up an appraisal. So you understand, I mean, you can see it's a pretty involved process. You know, an average appraisal, just so you understand, you know, what it takes. And, you know, the average appraiser gets anywhere from, you know, as low as two and a quarter up to about, you know, 400, okay, at least in Illinois. And for that, it will take a minimum, you know, probably the inspection and getting, you know, that's not how getting the inspection, you get actually choice of you know, where you want to go. But it will take anywhere from two hours to about eight to ten hours, okay, to do an appraisal. Just so you understand that, you know, it's not a simple thing. You know, most of these guys, they don't do a very good job, so they'll do it in two hours, even if it's hard. But I've had some hard ones that have taken me a good four, five, six you know, hours just to complete because they're coming. It's even the easy house. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that it's a million dollar house versus you know, a two hundred thirty thousand dollars. If there's no comps, there's no comps. Then it becomes difficult. Okay. That's when your job becomes hard. And that is also why, as an appraiser, as a broker, helping out the appraiser with good comparables if you can supply them, and with good data on your listing sheets, you know, it helps the process, helps everything all throughout. And that's basically, you know, what an appraiser does. So I just want to explain it to you. Take your time.